Hi, this is Martin Brennan, Product Manager for Imagineer Systems. The Mocha product series is used extensively throughout the industry for planar motion tracking, rotoscoping, and visual effects. With Mocha version 3, we introduce a greatly improved workflow as well as some completely new tools. In this video, I'm going to cover all of the significant features found in Mocha version 3. For more information, you can also refer to the Mocha version 3 documentation and our video tutorial section on the website. get larger and larger, and Roto gets more and more and more involved, one of the biggest demands from our customers recently has been to have more control over the shape layers. In Mocha version 3 we've completely redesigned the layer controls from scratch, so now you can have multi-layer workflow within your projects. Let's start by taking a look at multi-selection states. Here we have a great shot by Identity FX, who worked on Conan the Barbarian. We've got a huge range of layers here within this shot, and we want to start working on adjusting the layers of the man sitting in front. So what we can do is just select a single layer, and then hold down Shift, and select another layer to select the whole range of layers within that area. If we want to remove a selection, or add to the selection, we simply hold down Command or Control, and click what we don't want. For example, here we have a column that we don't want to have in this selection, so I'm going to click Column, and then we've got just the area that we need for this particular example. Once we have our layers selected, we can toggle some different states within the Layer Control Panel. If we want to no longer see the splines within the shot, we can turn off the visibility for all those layers. We can turn on their processing, which will allow them to be tracked or rendered, depending on the module that you're in. And if we don't want them to interact with the rest of the mats that we're working with, we can lock them all down with a single click. Now in version 3, you can also change the spline and matte colours from the layer control panel. So we can click on our spline colours here, and we'll change it to a different colour. So we can distinguish these splines from the rest of the ones in our shot. If I turn on my mats, and we can see the vast array of mats in this shot now, we can also do the same for the matte colour for the selected layers. So I'm just going to choose a nice blue colour here. And then that changes for all the selected layers that we have in the layer control panel. While we have the layers selected, let's have a look at the functions that are now at the bottom of the layer control panel. The duplicate button actually still works the same way as it used to, but now works for multiple layers. And the same goes for the delete key. We now have redesigned the Align Surface button to make it streamlined alongside the other icons, but this button will now also work for all the layers at once. So if we turn on our surface for all the selected layers, if we collect the line surface, it will blow that surface up to the full frame for all of those layers in the shot. The final one here is the Group. Clicking on the Group icon when there are no selected layers will create a separate empty group, but if we click the group icon by itself with layers selected, it will create a new group with those layers underneath. We can then rename our group to whatever we want, in this case I'll just call it man. And then we can perform group operations on top of the layers underneath. So visibility will turn off all of the layers underneath that group. The same goes for processing, even if you've got a processing tag tagged underneath the group, if you turn the processing off for the group, it will not show or render with that group one off. The same goes for lock, that will lock down all the layers under the group. And colour changes will happen for the entire group as well. Finally, if you want to keep it simple and don't like all of these extra icons cluttering up your view, you can now right-click the headers of any view and turn that particular column off. So if we want to hide the colours, the lock, and the processing, we can just have the visibility there, we can even hide the visibility and just keep the names. This means you can set up the layout the way you like inside the columns now and not just the individual floating palettes. If you want to get it back, we can go back to default view, or we can go in and choose particular ones from the checkboxes here, so we can turn off processing or view, or we can show all columns. The new transform tool is a feature to help you get better control over manipulating individual and multiple splines. We can turn it on and off from the view control panel here, and it provides this white box around the splines in your shot. 
If you hover your cursor close to one of the corners, you are able to rotate those splines. We can scale from the corners. We can also scale from individual sides. If we hold down Alt, it will scale from the center. And if we hold down Shift, it will scale uniformly. If we obviously hold down Alt and Shift, it will scale from the center and uniformly. This means when we actually do things like duplicating layers, we can move things across easily. And then if we hold down the Alt key, we can quickly flip that around and then rotate it back into position where we need it. If we hold down Command or Control and handle one of the corners, we're also able to do a skew distort to manipulate splines all at once. So if I select both of these splines, I can use skew distort on both the layers, or use scale, or rotate, and of course position. In Maker version 3, we also now have an enhanced link tool. If I select this one layer here, and I'm just going to reposition it around the door here, like so, I can now select this layer and come up to my link attach tool and just drag that point to the other layer and it will snap into place. Now previously this used to just snap to that point and then you would have to animate it, but now it actually links to those points and stays attached. If we ever want to get rid of them, we can come down to our point and say break constraint and it will pop back to where it belonged in the first place. So I guess I'm here, break constraint, like so. This is very useful for building up a quick linked series of mats for very complicated roto, but also very, very important for lining up quarters when you want to do removes from different planes. So for example, if I was to draw a wall spline here, so down to the bottom here, and we'll take that up. If I wanted to actually remove something that was in front of this wall, I could draw another shape along the edge here, to do my removal for the floor, and then just use the link tool to attach into those corners so that there were no gaps and the remove is a lot cleaner for this plane and for this plane. To help make things easier to move around, we've now introduced layer and spline nudging with the arrow tools. So we can see here that a foot is being thrown off the screen here and we need to just quickly nudge a few pixels where this blur is coming out. So I can select an individual point here and just using the arrow keys I can now nudge that into position. I can hold down the shift key to jump further pixels or we can just use one pixel by going up, down, left or right. If you have a numeric keypad you can also go up in diagonals and down. The same goes for layers, so if I do deselect my point, I can move the whole layer with the up, down, left, right tools, or I can select it for a few here, and then they will work for the nudge tool as well. So you don't have to keep on dragging your mouse to the top of the viewer all the time, we've also added in some view control shortcuts. So holding down the Alt key, you've got 1 to turn on and off the mats, you've got 2 to turn on the colour mats, You've got Alt-4 to turn off all the layer splines. We've got number 5 to turn on and off the tangents, so you can hide the tangents away. We've got Alt-6, and six, which turns on and off the surface. We've got Alt-7, which turns on and off the grid. And we've got 8, so if I select a uh, point here, if I do Alt-8, it will turn on and off the zoom windows. We also finally have the backdash key, and this is different on almost every keyboard that I've encountered, but the backdash key will hide all of the layers in the shot. So this is normally above the tab key, it usually also has the tilde on it, but it is different depending on your keyboard. Because a single shot can sometimes be handled by multiple artists, Mocha version 3 now has a merge project option for version 3 files. 
If you simply go to the file menu and choose merge project, you can choose an additional file to merge within your shot. For example, if I choose the file here to bring in, it will bring in the roto that was done for the forward character in this particular example. You can see here too that there is no hair that's been rotated in this shot because another artist has handled that separately. So I can go back, merge a project, find my hair layer, choose open, and that will merge in the hair work that was done by another artist in the studio. Once these are merged together, you can save the project out as you would a normal file, and all of the layers will be contained within the shot. In order to help with keyframe workflow, we've introduced the dope sheet into Mocha version 3. This is accessed beside the parameters in the side panel here. This dope sheet workflow lets you view all of the keyframes within the timeline and then modify or copy them to other places within the timeline. So we can move keys by selecting them and then repositioning them in the timeline. We can also choose, for example, say the spline here, look for our spline layers and see the individual control points for those splines. We can then just simply copy using Command C or Control C and paste elsewhere in the timeline at the playhead. The filled in keys are the individual keyframes for every separate parameter and the hollow keys are what are known as group keys which are hierarchical keys above your main parameters. This means it makes it easier to move around whole bunches of keys without having to individually go in and select them separately. One of the biggest requests from artists over the years has been to convert Mocha's planar tracking into three-dimensional data. With Mocha version 3, we introduce a camera solver that will use the planar tracks within your shots to do just that. The Mocha camera solver is very different from standard 3D trackers in that we are solving for a plane of information rather than feature points. We still utilize the same planar tracking methods you're used to in Mocha, which means you get a very solid tracking data to work with. To solve a camera in Mocha, you track planes the way you normally would, but you keep in mind how the camera is moving through the shot. Here is an example from the Swedish broadcaster SVT's work on real humans. We have a simple pan shot here, so we want to track the overall motion of the camera. To do this, I have tracked a large shape across the top of the shot to avoid the character walking in the foreground. To make sure my solve is very accurate, I've also tracked a small section at the background here, and the sign over on the corner. More planes in general means better solves, but you can usually keep shots like this to a bare minimum of tracks. Once we have our tracks, we can select all of the layers that we want to use for the solve, and then come down to our camera solver to do the rest of the work. First of all, we need to choose the type of camera that we want to use for the solve. We can either leave it at auto and let Mocha guess the type of camera it is, or we can choose one of the options under the camera dropdown. Pan tilt zoom is for cameras that are fixed in place, such as on a tripod, so they have no XYZ translation but have rotation and zoom. Small and large parallax change is for when the camera is moving, and you choose based on how much parallax there is in the shot. In this particular example, I know it's a pan tilt zoom, so I'm going to choose that option. When you select a particular type of camera, you can also choose the focal length. In this case, we know it's a 35 to 70 millimeter camera, so I'm going to keep it at that. You can also choose to select the zooming option when there is actual physical zooming within the camera. Once you've set up your camera solve parameters, then you can go ahead and just click solve. Some shots will solve faster than others, but pan tilt zoom is usually pretty quick. Once you've done a solve, you get a solve quality down the bottom of the camera solver. If you get a low percentage in the solve quality, this usually means that you either need to choose different layers to help solve the quality of the shot, or you need to make sure that the tracks that you've already done have actually been solid tracks to begin with. Once the camera is solved, we can then export out the camera data. Underneath the camera export options, we have the following. Right now, Mocha supports direct copy and paste of After Effects camera data via a separate plugin we're releasing with Mocha version 3. For Mocha Pro users, you also get the ability to export out FBX. Because FBX is a fairly wild beast, we've added separate support for general FBX, which loads into programs such as Maya and Cinema 4D, and a different export for Nuke, which interprets for FBX files just slightly differently. Here you can see the shot we solved inside Mocha pasted into After Effects. You paste a Mocha camera like you would a shape or tracking data inside After Effects. So we come up to the Edit menu, and we have Paste Mocha Camera. 
This again is a plugin that we'll be releasing with Mocha version 3. When you actually solve for layers, you'll get an individual null for each layer that you work with. When you're choosing large and small parallax nulls, you'll get a lot more of these so that you can see the plane of information that you're working with. Here's the same shot inside Cinema 4D using the FBX export, and the same shot again inside Nuke. We will be releasing more in-depth videos about the camera solver to get you up to speed. Because Mocha's planar method is a unique way of solving cameras, we want to make sure everyone has as much information as possible. Overview of Mocha version 3. If you want more information, please check out our website at imagineersystems.com. We also do tweeting, status updating, and blogging, or you can ask more questions on the forums. This has been Martin Brennand for Imagineer Systems.